everybody, to game number two of Dara versus Tong Fu. Tong Fu one loss away from being eliminated from Beyond the Summit's World Tour. I am LD, and joining me, of course, is my illustrious colleague, the one and only Luminous. The draft is already progressing, so let's jump right into it, Lumi. Game two, Creeper of the Light, Lone Druid, and Venomancer. Very, very familiar picks. Same as game number one. Meanwhile, pretty much the same thing over here on this side. Lashrak's going to be picked up instead, but we have that uh, Chen again. And it felt like Chen never had his uh, chance to shine last game, right? He was just jungling, 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 and suddenly a big CAK just, like, whammed. And, uh, well, he's dead. Well, part of it was that aggressive dual lane mid, the CK plus the Venomancer. Cool. Rubik needed a lot of help that game, and he already we see an adjustment. Queen of Pain is the pick up here. Generally, Mu is the one that plays this, but once in a while it will be Hal, the hard carry player. And then they play Queen of Pain much more as a farmer. Either way, if they want to put her mid, she should be okay. Even if you pick up a Chaos Knight Venomancer, that's not enough chain stun to kill off a Queen of Pain early on. In the mid game, maybe, but she should be able to get the levels and survive. So in that respect, I already like this adjustment better than going for the Rubik. Assuming she's mid, if not, I expect to see someone who's a little bit more survivable placed there. And we'll have to see for Dare if they go for that aggressive dual link. Chaos Knight, you're not yet picked up. And the second stage of bans begin. Windrunner will be banned out. And I love this ban from Dare. It's a hero that Tang Fu loved to run. Radiant and we're going to see an Invoker as the quick reply. Meanwhile, Enigma's going to be banned as well. I think Tang Fu now focusing a little bit on G's hero. And there's a dog outside. So let me go take care of him. Okay. Go smack that dog down. No, just kidding. Please be gentle. But uh, we'll get it quieted down for you guys. So, Kazna is the final ban. I do like this Radiant from Tang Fu. Not going to give Art Style that easy of... <laughs> I mean, especially when it's an Art Style Chaos Knight, right? Where he's going to get average of 3 to 4 second stun. Even even at level 1, he's hitting all, nothing but 2 second stuns. Now, that's not to say it's the only reason they had success in that lane, but it certainly makes life harder. And for Dare, uh-oh, we may be seeing the push cheese, and I yes, I will call it cheese that Dare has used in the past. Last time I saw them pick up Pugga, I believe it was a tri-lane or maybe even that quad lane action that we've seen out of teams like MUFC and Orange. Not sure if we'll see it off the bat, but come the mid-game, come the 10-minute mark, expect for a very aggressive timing push from Dare as they make a, a concerted effort to try and lock down map control, get the tower gold and advantage going their way. I'm not sure what I personally like this. The, the lineup itself is completely fine, but there is a team that likes to kill you first and then push down your towers, and now they're kind of going the other direction. I'm not sure whether they will have as much success, definitely not as much experience playing this right. kind of lineup. Uh, I mean, no doubt in my mind they could pull it off. It's just it's just not what they're most co uh, comfortable with. You know, it, it, it feels more like something MTW would do, and I know Dying right. is the final pick. Uh, MTW, much more of sort of a, a calculated, cautious team. Sure, they'll go for their aggressive ganks here and there, but mostly they're concerned about getting the map control. Not going for the hero kills, like you said. And Undying is the final pick. This is not, not quite all in, but right at that sort of precipice of the cliff, as close as you can get. Not too many heroes who scale well. And by the way, zero reliable stuns. Seconds, only an entangle to work with. This could be a lot of trouble against Queen of Pain, Sand King, Five two of the best ready. escape arts. Uh, artists in the business. It looked towards Tom Fu just giving up a couple of early towers, uh, choosing not to defend them because they simply cannot. You know, having things like pay Plague Wards, as well as Nether Wards, as well as a Tombstone, it's actually very difficult to hold the ground. Tinker. But the Radiant, I mean, the Dire team doesn't really have to. Uh, they're going to perhaps try to hold it with Tinker. Margin Machine is pretty legit. It doesn't matter if you have wards or, you know, zombies. The March will just damage everything and it will slow down and push. Rocket Lasers are pretty good at doing so as well. I feel like Tong Fu is, is prepared. It depends on, also look towards, uh, if this is a carry Lashrak, he's probably going to go for the Lightning build. So it will be a Hal Queen of Pain. That will be their primary farmer. Mu, though, will get a lot as well. And he's the tinker. And I got to say, it's a great supporting cast. Chen, Lashrak, and Sand King. Sand King probably going to be that secondary farmer, but it could be Lashrak as well. We'll have to see uh, as we get into the game in about 20 seconds. So you like Tong Fu's lineup coming out of this draft. I, I like Tom Fu's lineup matched up against Dare's lineup. They have enough AOD counter push, uh, and they have, in my opinion, better late. There's a long Drew on the enemy side, but having Queen of Pain and Tinker, the access into duel and perhaps even three hexes, depending if Lush goes to the carry, I think they have what it takes to go late. Yeah, they also have, they have better chain stun by far, and Dare is not a good team at running away. They're great if they stand there and fight the Nether Ward the tombstone but if Prepare they ever have to run the they're probably not escaping from sand king queen of pain as well not to mention tinker if he goes for a blink dagger or four steps so 
With all that being said, let's introduce our players. Kabu going to be on the Sand King. Early Stout Shield picked up. Moo playing that Tinker. 100 gold on the bank. Probably saving for a quick bottle. Lashrak wards and a smoke. Big support investment from him. That one being handled by Sang Sheng. Awoke going to be playing the Chen. And this time we see the adjustment. No early run of Basilius. Just some Sentry Wards picked up. Luby, I'm sure you like this a lot better. And Hal finally. Looks like he may be going mid on the Queen of Pain. We'll have to see as he has not saved any gold for a quick bottle. Yeah, I think Tinker makes a little bit more sense to go to mid, considering that he is saving go. But, you know, right. saving go for a quick soul ring on the side lane, you know, it's not a bad choice at right. all. The bear is going to be scouting out. Bear, by the way, has a style shield. And the bear is going to be handled by Mag, of course, this little bear player on the radiant Sorry. side. Sorry. And it's going to be gone playing the mid lane on the pug now. I'll, I'll talk about that in a bit. Uh, he's saving for the quick bottle, though. Goblin playing the Keeper of Light once again. Feed on the Urphonic on the Venomancer. And our style playing this Undying. Now, God playing the... Uh, Pugna. Pugna is one of those heroes that can have a powerful start blowing away a couple of towers. In terms of hero killing potential, it's not that high. He just harassed, he just harassed, but right. there are a few times Pugna is going to just kill you outright. But on the flip side, God could actually just die to ganks quite a bit. And again, I, I say this every time I cast here, they are very, very dependent on God to have a powerful Double start. Damage. Uh, and, uh, it's not you know, just God, though. It's also the hero. Pugna really right. needs a good start. He's not a hero that comes back. He either does well at the beginning of the game and has a big impact from then, or he has a bad start and he pretty much just feeds because he is very squishy, that great intelligence mm -hmm. growth. You can try and spam your spells, but you're just going to die. And Well, it looks like it may be an not offensive jungle watch. for Awoke, and I feel this will be a lot of trouble either for Pugna or for the, uh, so the lone druid, who, by the way, look at Mag's position. He is absolutely terrified. Parked at his tier 2. Just tried to pull the creep wave all the way back there. It looks like he might be able to. But wherever Awoke decides to go, whether it's bottom or whether it's mid, he is going to have his openings to get some early kills. Yeah, I think this is a good a good way to... Or, this is a good opening for Tom to just go for a push, right? You have a Lashrak in here, and I mean, Lundra is doing half the job for you in terms of you know, mowing down his own creep wave, sending it to the enemy base. I think all they really need is a backstab gank against the Lone Druid and suddenly the push comes. Lone Druid is not a good hero that recovers. Here we go, Chen in position. I think the push will be starting right now. At the very least, they're going to be harassing the bear a little bit for now. Right, we'll have to see. Maybe Awoke will even pull this creep wave in over towards the neutral. Tower already taking damage. Glyph, Glyph forced out. The Glyph is already used, and that's a big thing as we're playing against Lashrak. Oh, top lane. Oh, how taking so much damage. Level 1 scream. One more right click from Artsaw, the blink away. He salves up, but a lot of damage. This Trilane is doing a lot to hurt Hal, and look at Artsaw. Just fog, fog dropping that decay, trying to get some more damage. Won't be enough, but like you said, bottom lane. This push, it doesn't look like it can be stopped, and there you go, a point into Edict. Glyph already forced. This tower is going to take a lot of damage. So is Sangshade. Needs to remove that aggro, he will. But he drops about to half. And three tower shots already brought, yeah, brought them to about 40, 50 H, uh, percent HP. Kabu, by the way, I thought he was going to pick up into a very early level Kosk finale, give himself a little bit of oomph in that push, but they're okay for now. And one more round of Edict should do the job. And that's a very, very quick tier one. I mean, how is having a tough time on the top lane? But where's the, the trade? This tower is very, very healthy. There really is no trade, though. I mean, sure, you're hurting how, maybe you'll even kill him, but you're not getting a tower. Gale, oh, just missing by Funnick. Oh, that stinks. Not going to get the kill there. Moo looking to collect a regen or bottle. No bottle picked up just yet, but he's got the gold for it. We'll have to see if he wants to go for bottle or maybe just a quick pair of boots, especially having full mana right now. Either way, Moo's getting some farm. In terms of the middle lane, Pugna is slightly ahead, 11 to 5. Tinker 4 2. Actually, Tinker is pretty far behind here, but Tinker can definitely catch up, and that tower gold will help him a lot in that department. But look at the Sand King, he's got the smoke, and I think they're going to pay Tinker a visit, or not Tinker, uh, pay Pugna a visit on the mid lane. Pugna already very low in terms of mana, has just basically one spell left. Oh, top lane! For this? Oh, Hal oh, gets a solo kill dies. against the tri lane! Oh man, massive plays by Hal. And really over aggressive play by Funic there. Or Feed, as his name, very, very apparent in that engagement, because uh, Trilane getting a, feeding a first blood, that's not what you want. Here comes a centaur against God, and God, how will he react? He's gonna get stomped, the chainsaw not gonna be there, but it will be enough, because he is just so squishy. And that's not the start that Dare has, uh, or wanted to have, but, you know, right here, adjustment being made by Tongfu. I love the fact that they're giving the Lashrak some farm on the bottom lane. Sangshane boots picked up. We'll have those arcane boots relatively soon if he wants them. Or maybe just a couple of a bracer or something like that to give him some extra HP. Either way, he's getting some levels, he's getting some farm. And now Tongfu, content with that early tower, content with the first blood, and the kill mid, they're gonna head into their own jungle. Awoke will be jungled up with Kabu. 
Kabu level 3, awoke a bit behind, only level 2, but he will catch up. And the key player here is going to be Hao, who's level 5. You never want to give Hao this kind of a start. He is one of the best in the business when he has a good start of getting kills, and he's even looking towards art style. If they smoke Watch up so. to this top lane, I feel they could just wipe it. Oh, he missed a uh, scream, and that's well, probably not going to get the kill. Of course, he's going to hit level 6, and once he does, um, even the uh, Undying can be dying here on the top lane, so he's got to be somewhat careful. And also, the uh, Keeper of Light, I mean, one blink away, one Sonic wave away from death. Meowth looking in the mid lane here, it looks like it will come in. The Somp, some Centaur, no, he gets picked off here. Meowth Kabu's going to Burrow Strike away with the Haste Dream, he should be fine. But for now, God is getting a lot of attention paid towards the mid lane. And that's not what he wants. He just wants to be by himself and try to dominate Moo. And Moo's having a grand old time this mid lane. Actually putting points into Martian Machine. Oh, uh, the crap into Blast. Will Moo... Ah, uh, barely he walks out. Moo's just being very helpful in that engagement. And looks like the Queen of Pain. Wow, picks up yet another kill. Yeah, the Sonic Wave, the Screen Pain, Blink again. Arstyle trying to go for the kill. No way. There's just one Blink away and she's going to be battle just fine. Well, three kills into the pockets of Tom Fu. Art style, the lead farmer of this game, but only by a touch. Pugna there, we're close behind as well, 20, but look at Lashrak catching up pretty well. Actually, almost in first place here. And I mean, overall, Tom Fu, they're not getting quite as much farm, but Hao is getting the kills, and that means the Queen of Pain with the early level 6, Magic Stick, as well as an old talisman picked up, going for these cheap, aggressive early game items. He wants to make things happen, continue to happen, I should say, on this top lane, and if Chet and Sankin Dyer's come in, I feel he will get at attack. least two, if not three kills. Yep. So they're getting ready to TP back. And just want to point out that Shanshan perhaps was a little bit lagging, or whatever the case might be, he's not lasting particularly well. He's stayed in this lane for a long time, and sometimes Dyer's they peek over to see how he's doing. He's missing a lot of last hits. So I want to say lag, but, you know, whatever whatever he's uh, struggling with. Oh, top the top lane, lane the fight is going to break up. Burrow Strike against Arsal, Sonic Wave, Test of Fave. They're going to nuke him down. Meanwhile, Goblin, Shaling's Illuminate. That's going to hit all three players, but how is now the one. He's going to be doing the big damage. He sees speed, and he's going to pick up speed right now. And now Goblin trying to port out. He's going to just blast Illuminate as a... Uh... Oh, my God! <laughs> oh, what? what are you doing? Oh, no, no. that's okay. I think that's okay. Uh, getting getting your hard carry player a triple kill more than makes up for that, I would say, but a little bit sloppy play from Woke. Maybe it's the lag. Or maybe it's just big plays coming out from Dare. Nonetheless, score 6-1. to one. This is not the... Oh, I mean, we talked about it. Dare is not really a team built to go ultra late game. They're a team that wants to get those early levels, those core items up, things like mechanism, maybe a pipe, and then go push down your outer towers. They're really not even damaging the towers. Top very healthy, mid as well. And even bottom, bottom hasn't been touched. This is not this is not Dara's game. It's not why they picked these heroes. It's not why they land the way they did. Again, they ju I feel like they are just unexperienced in terms of playing this kind of lineup. Look at the mid tower. You're in a Pugna. You expect the tower to be at half HP by this point in the game of the constant blasting coming from Pugna. That has not happened. The trialing at top has not done any type of damage to that tower either. And uh, again, Darren loves to kill first and then kill the tower later, but now they're doing neither because the hero's not capable of doing hero killing, or at least not as good as, you know, Nice Darker or whatever stable that Darren does pick normally. One thing that Tongfu really does need is some levels on this Chen. He's only level 4 right now. Awoke needs to jungle it up, hit level 6, at least get 5 for multiple creeps. They will need that heal because Darren have some good burst damage coming out from the Pugna. Uh, the Undying does actually a lot with the Soul Rip as well as the Decay. And the Zombies, if you get low, then they start to really hurt. So I would like to see Awoke get a couple levels. It's not too urgent, but too much longer it can be trouble. Middle lane, Moo's going to drop low. In comes Kabu. This is the third smoke gank, by the way, of the game for Tom Fu. Burrow straight through. Illuminate still catches him. Oh no, the Split Earth flies through as well. And I... Hey, Kabu will live. One more Illuminate. It's cooling down, Lumi. Big snipe. Big snipe. Oh, he <laughs> just kill eclipse him and hit picks him off. Meanwhile, top lane. Nothing's really going on here, but the tombstone is dropped, and that is farm up by how 110 gold into his pockets. And he's not done just yet. He wants Arc style. The ult is going to hit the blink in the scream. How is unstoppable indeed. Another kill going his way. And he wants Funic. Fought eight charges of magic wand and the bottle. He's going to get this kill almost for sure. Blink in, one more scream, do it how indeed he does. Double kill, and this is one of Hao's signature heroes, and we're seeing why right now. I have to say that Hao is Al G G right now. Because this is what G does best, and he's not even doing it. Well Hao G is, uh... G is not playing a G hero, that's part of the problem. No, Pugna no, doesn't that's the do thing, right? Like why this. pick him why pick him Pugna? 
You know, I mean, That's it's just, question. it's not a big play hero. You can play very, you know, safe and solid and make big contributions to your team, but you're not going to dive towers, pick up multiple kills. Maybe if you're farmed, then they underestimate you, and then you kill them all. It's just not a G hero, and, well, he's not in his comfort zone. Dare overall trying something different, which is great. This is a tournament where teams want to get practice. But bear in mind, there is no more practice for Dare if they lose this best out of three, as they will be knocked out of the event. Yep. Uh, this is game two for anyone that's joining us. Tong Fu got thrashed upon in game number one, and they're fighting for their lives right now. Looking pretty good, up by eight kills oh, and a couple of thousand gold. Oh, again, how with the massive tower dives, but this might be a, a bridge too far. Indeed, taking Ooh. a lot of damage. Underestimate Artstyle's heals, but another blink away, and he will be fine. Uh, I'd just like to point out, I love this adjustment by how not going for any points with Shadow Strike, up against the tri lane, just going for the big AoE nuke, and I feel it's made a big difference here. Yeah, it's something that, you know, when you say out loud like that, it makes, oh yeah, of course you don't go for Shadow Strike, but a lot of players just forget about that adjustment, and they just follow that, uh, that tr the skill build blindly. Yeah, exactly. definitely do not pick up the Shadow Strike here against three heroes. Doesn't matter uh, if you slow one down, three is still going to be thrashing even found you. Back in the mid lane, Burrow Strike against God. God just not going to be making those big plays if he's going to be sent back to the fountain every three, 30 seconds or so. They're paying so much attention to God. This is what, the third or fourth smoke gank? Third, third or fourth gank in general. And again, if you pick off G, if you slow him down, there's got nothing. Yeah, they have one smoke up, so that was only the third. But I say only, that's a lot of smoke eggs for this early on in the game. How hasted up, heading towards top. Once art style has the ult, art style is gonna have to TP out here if he wants to live. The ult, he's only level nine. It should be enough. One more scream, as well as the ult. Maybe doesn't even need it. Just one more scream. No. Oh, I thought Kabu stole that one, but how gets it on a monster kill? If you want to go for a Dagon, this would not be a bad game to do it in. A Dagon actually against uh, Pugna, not a bad bad item uh, to go because you can pick him down a couple more times. But uh, perhaps we'll see a very very early hex. That's a definitely a very powerful way to go about it as well. Shenzhong haven't been paying attention too much to him because he hasn't been really contributing. He's just sitting, uh, kind of farming in a lane. He's only got Arcane Boost to show for. It. Does he have any other than in the the career or something? It's farm is got really nothing. 41 and 5. I don't think he's got any clue. How? 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 Very low. It's going to be blinking out the Cryptified live stream Blast. Brought him down to 46 HP. It should be okay. So I, I, I jokingly said Dagon, but most likely what we're going to see is a BKB, maybe a point booster first. That's generally the build Hal goes for. And against this Dare lineup, what are they really going to do about that BKB? Just entangle. That's it. Hope you get lucky mm. because otherwise he's going to wipe you. Necrobook, it's pretty decent if you want to go for a little bit more mana burning, a little bit more HP on Queen of Pain. But yeah, she has such a big amount of option, and because she's so far ahead, it opens up her option even more. Even Dagon becomes a very legit choice in this case. But it's going to be a point booster, like you said. Very, very good way to boost her HP and mana. Here we go. She's back for more on top lane, and these guys are not ready. Their bodies are not ready. I also, I really feel like Dare is not adjusting. They just keep on heading up to the top lane again. Artstyle just will not leave this lane. He's not really pushing. He's getting some good farm. But Undying, you pick him to get towers. You pick him for sustain it, sustaining the push. Maybe turn around an early team fight. Oh, Decrepify Blast. How cannot fight under that ward? He will kill himself, and he blinks away. Yep. The yeah, lack of adjustment here, but I mean, they're holding on Magus, be the, the silent hero in this, uh, this game. He's got 2,900 gold, so I don't think they're out at this point. It's looking really rough, but once you have a Radiance on the Syllabar, I mean, all you need is one lucky entangle on the Queen of Pain, and perhaps you pick her off in the scene fight, and everything swings around. You gotta keep in mind that Queen of Pain is also holding on one of the biggest streak possible, and she's only got a thousand HP to show for it. So if you can pick her off, that's pretty big. God, though, they have their eyes set on him. Well, he's got. Pl oh, yep. I was thinking of uh, thinking of someone else there. Yep. God is in a lot of trouble. Goblin, of course, is not, but the Trilane supporting him. And well, Kabu is getting some farm now, and I gotta say, Tongfu does a really good job of this. They make sure that yeah. their supports get farm and levels. They don't just, especially when they're ahead, you will see a good farm distribution. Sangshe was missing a lot of last hits, but still, he's Radiance level 8, 13 minutes, and that's quite attack. good for a tri lane with Meanwhile, we do see Goblin coming in with Illuminate, just Bottom harassing lane. a little bit. Oh, Burrow Strike into an Epicenter. I, this is an overextension by Kabu. Mag is like, okay, I'm just gonna right click you. No entangles. Mag Lucky just... to survive. Oh, here comes uh -oh. Hal. Maybe it wasn't. Oh, this would be a big kill, Lumi. He's almost got that relic. 
The entangle should keep him alive. Yep, he's gonna oh. back off. Looks like Blue's coming in. Goblin trying to get some Burrow Strikes. He's gonna find him. And now, how it's gonna come around? Big Sonic Wave, big Sonic Wave, big Blink into a kill. Blinding light, blinding light. Yeah, misses, misses, but nope. That's a nine kill streak on how. Top nine lane, Sangshane, the big dive going on to him. Funic already used the Gale. Look at the auto text. Oh my goodness, the decay damage. But what do you do when the other enemy team has no disables? You TP out, and he's gonna do that right now. I mean, he wishes he has a TP out right now because of the good BOT Tinker a lot faster than him trying to juke. Well, nice war number one, but oh, <laughs> jukes, jukes for days from feed. But no, a laser will target you and will find you. And that's you another kill that Moo just picked up. Moo and Hal, just the Bash brothers absolutely having their way right now. 11 0 1 combined. Mostly it's been the Hal show. Well, we'll have to see. What does he want to spend all his hard earned gold on? 400 gold on the bank. DD Room picked up. Looks like he doesn't even want to bother to spend his gold. Just continue killing people. Force his art style back. And even when he's not getting kills, he's just sending his back to base, applying so much pressure all over the map. Mag, so a gold check on him right now, 3,700 gold, so it's, you know, a 15 million relic, despite the team that is going 2 and 12, so this is a big strategical choice by Tongfu to say, alright, we're gonna focus on four of your heroes, and we're gonna let you loan to do your worst, uh, and let's see if is gonna pay for it, eventually. How much is this? Oh, top lane, we'll talk about that later, tower not gonna be denied, How gets it, focuses on the tombstone, blinks out instead. Art style giving chase, but how far can he really chase? It turns out not very far. How comes back in? DD Rune still up on him. Gale is gonna hit, and it looks like he should be forced back. It looks, yeah. How just he really wants to go in. You can sense his desire here. Once Art style splitter is gonna hit, and now How's gonna go. The ultimate gets popped. Not gonna matter. Art style melts, and now on to Funic they go. That early pulse Nova picked up. Funic will take it fall too, and the chase is not over just yet. They're gonna start pushing in this top lane. And Mag farming away in the jungle, but here, Lumi, to your point earlier, what is this Radiance really going to do? Chen has his ultimate picked up, he's got a mech, he's not too far off level 11. They don't have a pipe just yet, but I feel like the mech and the heal alone will be more than enough to deal with that Radiance burn. Not only that, the Radiance team fights build around staying alive for a long time, right? You want your Tombstone, your Nether War to drain your HP, drain your damage, uh, drain your mana, excuse me, and overall just win a team fight in a very prolonged engagement. That's when you lone at 40 damage per second stack up as well. The thing is, you're up against a Queen of Pain. If oh, anything, God. the team fight's gonna get really short. God is gonna be, well... Not his game. Not his game. No yeah, wards up there. I, they might have spotted him rotating out of the mid lane, but... It's, it's just not working out for him, man. By the way, Kabuos has a blink dagger. 600 gold in the bank. Phonic's gonna spot him out, stays there in range, and Kabu chooses not to go in. Perhaps having a little bit of mercy. Still Kabu fighting with the wards. Gale is gonna hit Burrow Strike through Rockets as well. Epicenter channel, no way to cancel it. Blighty Light pushes him back, not enough. Gets the kill, and the push, it will continue. Chen Heal was already used. The mech was used as well. Keeps the creeps alive, and the push will continue. Mag still not ready to contribute. He needs that Radiance to do anything here. And he doesn't have it just yet. Artstyle looking for the big backstab. Drops the tombstone. Sanction taking a little bit of damage. Kabu looking for the burst strike. Hits two. Oh man, what a burst strike by Kabu and Artstyle. Just too much burst damage. Cannot sustain in these fights. This is not the Undying performance we've seen out of Fear from EG. Whenever he plays Undying, he gets the early big items up. And they just can't kill him. This Undying, very easy to be burst down. Yeah, the Undying is either the build to kill the enemy uh, lanes, very much so, or it's built to push, and they accomplish neither, and because of that, Undying is one of those heroes that need quite a bit of experience, as well as gold, did not get any of them, and uh, he's not really catching up in this mid-game. Mag is uh, expecting a big gang come his way, do they see Mag? Well, Mag sees him now, and they have to back off. Mag, by the way, just 300 go away, but these last 300 go can be the most excruciating. Our wow! Is a GG. I agree. Even with the Radiance come back, they just, they can't do it. They can't do it. I I mean the gold graph, the experience graph, they all certainly certainly point the way of calling GG here. Still, it's very early, but Dare they've had enough. They just want a fresh start in game number three, and they will get it. How, what an appropriate way to end our Beyond the Summit World Tour group stages. It will be a <laughs> best out of three going the distance, going to game number three. This one's for all the marbles, folks. Whoever wins it advances. Whoever loses it. They go home. You're gonna find out very soon. Lumi, do you have a favorite? Do you have a team that you're feeling a little bit more confident about? Or is this one completely up in the air for you? 
The question here for the Radiant team, or for Dyer is, Dare, is how do you stop how? If you don't answer that question, there's gonna be no uh, no no more games for Dare. Beautiful, man. I cannot I can't add anything to that. Ladies and gentlemen, that was game number two. Series tied up one to one. We'll be going into game three momentarily. I am LD. He is Luminous, and you're watching Beyond the Summits World Tour. See you on the other side.